Good morning, boys and girls. It's time for another program with Irene Wicker, the singing lady. Miss Wicker, our Peabody Award winner, has enchanted countless minions on radio and TV with her delightful songs and deliciously different voices she uses in her storytelling. And now to introduce you to this morning's special treat. Here is The Singing Lady. Children, you who wish to hear songs and stories, come draw near. Young and old, come hand in hand, and we'll be off. girls and boys, and you grown-up friends are with us too. How are you today? Fine, we hope. And for you children and grown-ups, happy Father's Day to all of you. We have some special stories today requested in your wonderful cards and letters. The boyhood story of the great Norwegian composer Edvard Grieg and the story of the ugly duckling by Hans Christian Andersen. The month of June, aside from being a month for Father's Day, is the month of the birthday anniversary of Edvard Grieg. And we have music with our special and favorite young music master, Samuel Sanders at the piano. Thank you, Samuel Sanders, for playing that lovely music by Edvard Grieg. And we're going to have more of it now as you listen to Grieg's piano, concerto in A minor. Samuel Sanders. great music I wish Samuel had time to play for you to spring and many others but there is a lovely melody which has been put into a lovely song Ich liebe dich maybe you know it try to sing it with it will you years ago, there lived in Bergen, Norway, across the Atlantic Ocean, a little boy whose name was Edward Grieg. Edward's father was a successful businessman, his mother a fine musician. For many hours a day she played the piano and sang and Edward would always listen happily. I like music better than anything, music and poems things to hear. They fit together. I might be a 
able to sing some words to that music my mother is playing. Oh, in the skies, oh stars twinkling up so high, your dark nights glowing high. Is that your pen? Yes, dear. But he didn't know it would become a song. That was very nice. Could I play something? All right. Let me hear. Let me see what you can do. <laughs> you can make almost any kind of thoughts with piano notes. So you can, Edward. La, 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 la. It sounded like trolls, spooky trolls. Like in that, that poem that, that you read to me, that Ibsen poem. You are quite right, dear. Quite right. Spring is nice to sing about. It is fun to pick up melodies. It is lots of fun, Mama. It is fun if you know how to do it. But of course, to turn music dreams into music accomplishment, one must work very hard, as well as play at the piano. Perhaps it is time for you to start studying seriously now that you are six, hmm? I think you can begin to learn to play music and understand it. I want to, Mama, I do. So at that very time, about June the 15th in 1849, when Edward Grieg was just six years old, he began to have his first music lessons with his mother. Mama, I like best the melodies. And the exercises, they, they, they sound ugly. Why do I not be able to play melodies? And things I think about and dream about? Well, Edward, only by practicing scales and exercises would you be able to understand and play beautiful melodies that you dream about. Mm, I suppose so. I do want to learn about music, too. So Edward Grieg played the scales he did not like until he could play them well enough so that even the exercises sounded pretty and musical when he played them. Sometimes little Edward Grieg would sit and dream at the piano trying to find melodies that sang in his heart. Soon he was able to write down what he called his music thoughts. One day when he was about 12 years old he finished a set of musical variations for the piano. These he took to school to show his best friend, Olaf. Olaf, you always ask me to bring my music to school. Well, I just finished this. It's called Musical Variations for the Piano. Ooh, Edward, how can you do that? Oh, it's not too hard. It does not look easy to me. Well, you have these five lines on the paper, see? And then you write notes on those lines that you play on the piano, just the way you, you read words that are in a book when you want to read. <laughs> Does not look that easy to me. Uh-oh, here comes the teacher. He looks angry. So, Edward Grieg, again, wasting time dreaming. Get to work. So what I'm doing is work, music is work, and I think that Ole Bull is a great man and the greatest violinist in our country or any other country. And I would rather be like him than anybody. And he works, he works hard, practicing and writing music and practicing and writing music are hard work, sir. Do not be impudent. This is not for school hours. No, now you get to work and learn your lessons for school. Yes, sir, I will try. So little Edward Green tried very hard to do his best and study as he was expected to do. But each day after school, he would dream of beautiful music. Because it is everywhere. Oh, if I could just write it the way Chopin writes music and play it. Like the great Ole Bull, they are my heroes. And I want to be like them more than anything. Somebody's riding up to our house on horseback. Who 
Who is it, I wonder? Mother, who is it? Shh, Edward, he'll hear you. Mr. Bull, <laughs> excuse my son. This is a most happy surprise. We are very glad to see you. And Edward has always wanted to meet you, haven't you, dear? You really? Maestro Bull, the greatest violinist in the world? It is wonderful to see you. Well, thank you, my boy. It is wonderful to be greeted with such praise. And you wish to be a musician, huh? Well, let's go inside. Let's hear what you can do. Thank you, sir. I could play for you a little bit of Chopin, not so well as Mama. Then I... Would you... Would you like to hear something of, of my own? Indeed, if you compose music, I would like to hear that more than anything. Thank you, sir, then. I will try. Blossoms white, sunshine bright in spring. Birds merrily sing. All is music in spring. Oh, yes, yes. That is beautiful music. My boy, you are a musician. Excuse me, please, a few moments. I wish to speak with your mama and papa alone. Yes, sir. Oh, does he really like my music? How could he, great musician like him? Oh, here he comes. I wonder what he's going to say now. Edward, it has been decided that if you wish to do so, you shall go to Leipzig and study in the conservatory. Edward, you may become a truly great musician if you work hard. Oh, thank you, sir. I will. I will. But Edward Grieg had to work much harder than most musicians. For not long after he went to Leipzig, his hand was badly injured, but he would not give up his music. I shall work and I shall practice until my hand is strong. I will not give up. I will not. And Edward Grieg did not give up. Although his injured hand lost much of its strength, it did not lose any of its skill. And of course, you know, when Edward Grieg grew up, he composed many beautiful melodies, songs, Concerto. Indeed, you remember Samuel Sanders played a melody from the Grieg Piano Concerto. Listen as he plays it once again. Remember, when you hear that music again, that it was composed by Edward Grieg. And you just heard a story about the days of his childhood in Norway. Now for our request story for today. We're going to have a story many of you have asked to hear and we're glad because it is one of the most beautiful fairy tales ever written by Hans Christian Andersen, who is also from a Scandinavian country, as you know, Copenhagen in Denmark. The Ugly Duckling. Once upon a time, long ago, in the land of make-believe, a nice white mother duck had a flock of white baby ducklings. But one of them was very different. Long, gawky, thin, ugly. And it did not say, quack, 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 as the others did. Mother Duck was very puzzled. She talked over the situation with her wise friend, Mrs. Prattle Duck, from the orchard. Quack, 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 Mrs. Prattle Duck. I do not understand. Quack, 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 Mrs. Mama Duck. I shall tell you now what I think. I think this child was put into your nest by those good-for-nothing wandering turkey gypsies from the forest. Probably a stolen egg they picked up someplace 
just out of meanness. And mark you my words, I think it is not a duck at all. This nubby thing in time, you'll see, most certainly a duck won't be. It will be a turkey, I am sure of that. It will be a turkey, you can bet your hat. Quack, 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 Mrs. Prattle Duck. Oh dear, oh dear, come children, come. Here we are, happy as can be. Never mind, children. We must go to the water now for your swimming lesson. Your first swimming lesson. There now. In you go. That's right. Now, the strange new child can swim. He is not a turkey, as Mrs. Prattle Duck said. But turkeys cannot swim. Quack, quack. He does swim. But not one sound does he make. Nevertheless, he swims quite well. My poor, funny little ugly duckling. Quack, quack, quack. Come, children. We must go back to the poultry yard. Now keep near me. Must not get stuck down. Keep your eyes open for the cat. Ah, here comes the girl with your supper. Don't be greedy now. Now it so happened that while the little ducks played in the barnyard, the girl from the kitchen began to play with them. You cute little duckling. Here's a little more for you. And you, and you. What is this ugly little thing? And quite by accident, the little girl from the kitchen hit poor little Nubby with a pan of grain. But Nubby thought she meant to do it. And off he ran to the fence. But there, a big old turkey gobbler saw him and laughed quite without thinking. Gobble, 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 gobble. What an ugly fellow you are. I know. They all say that. Excuse me, Mr. Gobbler, I have to go. The kitchen girl hits me. The ducklings laugh at me. The gobbler. And they all say I am ugly. I'm going far away. I'll hop and I'll hop until I have to stop. Look at the beautiful ducks in the field. I wish they would let me stay with them. No. No. They go away when I come near. Well, now, something else is coming. Oh, oh, I see, I wonder. What is that they say? Honk, 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 honk. Who are you? Strange you are and ugly, too. What is your name? Oh, tell us, won't you pray? How do you swim or do you fly your way? Honk, honk, honk. Who are you? I do not know quite who or what, but I think I am a duck. <laughs> you cannot be a duck. Your neck is too long and you are too ugly, but you seem nice enough. Fly with us. Fly. But the little nubby was too small to fly, and off went his friends. But suddenly, a dreadful thing happened. There was a loud bang, 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 and some of them fell. They were geese. And they had been shot. The ugly duckling was too frightened to move. He trembled and shook. Oh, there was a man with a dog. And that thing that shot down my friends. They're coming after me. No, they do not want me. Only the birds that fell. Nobody wants me. I must be very, very, very ugly. And Nubby looked up at the cool gray sky and saw the most beautiful sight he had ever seen. A flock of white swans going south for the winter. Look, if I were like that, I would be the happiest thing in the world. If only I could fly like that. If I could be one of them. But now, Nubby could fly only a little at a time. He was too young to fly very much. In a few more weeks, it began to get cold, and he hopped to the middle of the pond. And there his feet were almost frozen fast. I do not care. Nobody loves me. Then a farmer came along, broke the ice, and carried the ugly duckling home to his children. Look! What is it, Johnny? I don't know, Mary. Maybe a duck. His neck is too long. <laughs> he is too ugly, but he looks nice. 
Maybe he'll play with us. They're coming after me. Oh, dear. I hopped into a pan of milk and spilled it. Oh, now the lady's coming. Oh, dear. Like all the others. Shoo, shoo, whatever you are. Get out, get out, get out. Shoo. And off into the snow again went the ugly duckling. All winter long, Nubby flew on little short hops and lived on reeds and dried grass. But each day he grew stronger. He could fly a little better. Though he was lonely and unhappy, in the spring, all the birds began flying north, and Nubby watched them. I wish I could fly high and far, like the geese and the swans. I can! I must be grown up! Where shall I go? There's a beautiful garden with a lake. I'll fly down there with beautiful swans. I wish they would be my friends, but I am too ugly for them. I do not care. I shall stay near them, and if they chase me, I shall give up. Oh, they, they are coming, but they do not sound angry. They bow to me. They're singing to me a, a song of welcome. Welcome, brother, welcome here. Let us greet you with good cheer. Come now, tell us where you're from. We're so glad, so glad you've come. They mean me, ugly duckling? And the ugly duckling bowed his head, tucked it under his wing, and saw his own reflection in the lake for the first time. Oh, I am not an ugly duckling anymore. Can it be true? I never dreamed there could be such happiness in this world. And from that day, the ugly duckling lived ever after happily in the beautiful garden with the other beautiful swans. And that is the lovely story by Hans Christian Andersen. And before we say goodbye, we were so fascinated listening to the beautiful playing by Samuel Sanders of Grieg's beautiful music. We forgot to tell you, if you send a card or a letter or a poem or a story request, please send it to Irene Wicker, The Singing Lady, WNYC, New York 10007, New York. And now it is time for us to say goodbye until the next time when we hope you'll join us once again. And that ends another program with Irene Wicker, the singing lady. If you have a favorite song or story you'd like to hear, send a letter or card to the singing lady, WNYC, New York 1007. And don't forget to join us again same time next Sunday morning, 8.30, for the next of these programs. <laughs>